Mr Speaker, the Government published its plans for day-to-day -day spending in the Spring Budget in March. But when I arrived at the Treasury on the very first day, I was alerted by officials that this was not how much the previous Government expected to spend this year. Ah. It wasn't even close. It means, Mr Speaker, that we have inherited a projected overspend of £22 billion. Pounds. £22 billion is the figure Labour have used to bash the Tories with on fiscal responsibility and to justify cutting the winter fuel allowance. But what is this shortfall? And did the Tories really leave the public purse £22 billion light? Well, let's turn to this extract from the Radio 4 programme, more or less, as they break it down. And it's time for a lesson in black holes. Not the boring outer space kind, but the far more thrilling government accountancy kind. In particular, the £22 billion kind. A hole in the finances that Labour have been talking about repeatedly since the Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, announced the results of a rapid audit of the government finances a few weeks back. The fiscal situation is bleaker than we thought, and the previous government concealed it, or so Rachel Reeves says. But hold on a second. Weren't there countless warnings during the election campaign that politicians weren't being transparent about the dire state of the public finances? Isn't this £22 billion hole just part of the same thing? I spoke to Gemma Tetlow, Chief Economist at the Institute for Government, to find out just what's going on. Before the election, we were saying that let's assume that the budget for this year is correct and look at what's then planned as the growth in spending from next year onwards. And we were saying that the growth in spending over the next few years pencilled in looked implausible because we could clearly see that there were pressures on spending growth that were going to be larger than could be met from that plan. The 22 billion number is asking a different question, which is to say, let's look at the budget that was set out for this year and does that actually look plausible or is that not going to be sufficient to meet the government's spending needs? Um, and so Rachel Reeves has said, having looked at that number, there's actually going to be a need for £22 billion more spending than Jeremy Hunt had budgeted for when he was Chancellor. So uh, alongside the terrible news that everybody could see, there's a new bit of juicy, extra bad news that's more imminent. Exactly. Exactly right. And we are told this black hole is £22 billion. So I have to ask the, the f primary question of any more or less interview, is £22 billion a big number? I think I'll have to be a real economist here and say yes and no. Um, it, it's not a big number in the sense that the government spends a trillion pounds, a thousand billion pounds a year. Out of that, £22 billion here or there is not very large. However... It's looking back at history and how much the government tends to overspend its budgets in previous years. £22 billion would be quite a large number. In fact, the sort of long run of history suggests that the government is quite good at coming in a bit under budget rather than over budget. So the number is £22 billion. Um, how did she get that number? And then, And is it fair to say that this really was a surprise? There are lots of components to the £22 billion, pounds, but I'd say there are really two big chunks of uh, costs that uh, the Treasury Review and Rachel Reeves highlighted. The biggest single chunk is extra money needed to meet public sector pay settlements. Um, about £2 billion pounds extra is needed to meet the costs of pay settlements that were awarded by Jeremy Hunt for 2023. Teachers, for example, get any pay rises later in the year, so the cost of the pay rise shows up late. The Conservative government obviously knew this cost was coming, and so you might think it could have been budgeted for. There's then a further £9.5 billion ish, which reflects the cost of the pay settlements for this year, and that's obviously a decision that was made by. Rachel Reeves to accept the recommendations of the pay review bodies for settlements of around 5.5% this year. And that's more than was factored into the budgets for departments this year, which assumed something more like 2% pay growth instead. Right. So that was a policy choice made by Rachel Reeves that was different to the uh, policy choice that had been set out by her predecessor, Jeremy Hunt. Um, although that said, 
she didn't just pull the number out of thin air. She accepted the recommendations of independent pay review bodies. Exactly. And indeed, last year, Jeremy Hunt accepted the recommendations of the independent pay review bodies as well. So for this £9.5 billion for pay settlements, you could argue the toss, whether or not it was a cost that had been hidden by the previous government. The pay decision hadn't yet been made by the Conservative government, but the amount budgeted was unlikely to be enough, whatever the decision in the end. £12 billion down, what about the rest? So the single biggest chunk within the rest is extra money required to meet asylum and immigration costs. And this is largely the cost of housing people who have arrived, are claiming asylum, and the UK government is putting up in hotels and other forms of accommodation. The cost of housing people seeking asylum until their claims are processed, or under the previous government's policy until they were theoretically sent to Rwanda to be processed, Those costs have gone up and up in the last few years. So that was not budgeted for. And I think this is much more questionable about why that was not budgeted for. This is something where in recent years we've been spending something like £4 billion in 2023 on these costs. And yet, for some reason, the Home Office, when it set out its main estimates, its sort of expected budget for this year back in July assumed that those costs would not happen again this year. And indeed, slightly oddly, alongside that quite low budget estimate that the Home Office set out in July, they said, actually, we expect to spend more on asylum and immigration. We're expecting to make a claim on the reserve. We're expecting to draw down several billion pounds from that later in the year, which that seems very odd. So it's, it's almost like it was a known cost, but it somehow for some reason wasn't factored into those budgets. And this is something the Home Office and the Treasury collectively have been doing for at least the last four years. Um, it's something the Home Affairs Select Committee, who scrutinise the Home Office, have pointed out in Parliament repeatedly, but for some reason it's carried on happening, that they haven't budgeted for it and then have kept drawing on the reserve for this quite predictable cost. So... I mean, should the civil service take responsibility for that? Should should the outgoing government take responsibility for that? I think there are real questions, not just for the outgoing politicians who oversaw this and ultimately signed it off, but also for those civil servants, both in the Treasury who scrutinise the Home Office budget and for Home Office officials about how uh, they got to the point of setting out a budget which quite clearly was not a central expectation of what they'd be spending in this area. These things make up the bulk of the £22 billion overspend. Other components include increased funding for railways after passenger numbers were lower than predicted and money for the war in Ukraine. Whether this overspend is the fault of civil servants or politicians and which parts of it were predictable or not, the bottom line is pretty clear. If the £22 billion turns out to be the extra money that's needed relative to the budgets that were set at the start of this year, that would still be a pretty big number compared to the sort of overspends we've seen in the last few years. And if you think that's the end of it, well, it'd be wrong. All those bleak predictions for the future finances are still there in the background, and Gemma says the spending pressures will be even greater in the years ahead. Click here for Richard Tice lays out reform's latest grift.